I am bringing uh, my defender. I can feel the heat already in here. I should go to Jamaica, man. Finley chasing sparks. This is the kind of things I live for, man. I'm sleep like a baby fit. Hi, I'm Greg Ovens, and this is Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. Greg Ovens here, Ovens Rocky Mountain Bushcraft. So this video, we're gonna make a bed out of moss, blanket out of moss. I hope to achieve fire. I forgot to mention, I am bringing uh, my defender. This is grizzly country. I mean, you don't wanna get stuck out here in the middle of the night, sleeping on the ground with no defender. So we got to determine what our priorities are. Making a bed in a spot in case it rains is important. Under a big tree probably. If I get a fire going, I can heat up some rocks and we go from there. Right here I think this might do. Big old spruce. And I'll show you what I got in mind. So I'll make my bed here. It doesn't look too bad as it is once I get my moss in here but it should stay dry even if it rains here and it's soft here look at it. a lot of needles dangerous to have a fire near this but the creek is right here no carpenter ants got a big log here should prevent me from rolling I think this will work just fine I oh, like this thick moss in these uh, big forests, old growth like this. There's nothing like a moss bed, I find. You make it as thick as you want. Like, oh, it's already nice and soft. But I'm going to make it a lot thicker yet. And then have a layer for a blanket in case of mosquitoes. Oh yeah, man, this is cozy. It's gonna be so nice. The moss is a bit damp, but it'll dry out if I get my fire going and I can put some warm rocks under it. Not hot rocks, or you, you get burnt. Warm rocks. Not really too worried about my legs down the bank here, just my upper body mostly. Try to pick the sticks, anything that's gonna poke you out. Sometimes you get poked by sticks that are caught in the moss, but during the night you usually find them. But this is getting very soft, very nice. I love moss beds, man. I've slept on moss beds most of my life in the bush. Patagonia too. You have to add moss every uh, few days. They'll stay soft for a few days at a time and then they just flatten out and they don't, they're not spongy anymore. So you gotta keep adding moss, but that's not a big deal. There's moss everywhere here. Okay, so I'll get this built up, warm up some rocks, off the bed. Okay, these are good. They're nice and warm, but they're not too hot. I can hold them, but I feel the warmth. That's what I want. Oh, I wish I would have brought a coat actually, but the moss is dry. Uh, there's not much for mosquitoes. I should be fine. 
I'm gonna use this for a blanket. The moss I've collected, I'm gonna put it upside down for the blanket. It's nice and dry. Worm rocks, just cover myself with this. Could be the odd insect, but whatever. Okay, it's actually very comfortable. The things you do to survive in the bush. No blanket. Should have brought a coat. But, I'll tell you what, it's pretty soft. Oh yeah, soft, no mosquitoes, that would be awful. Mosquitoes are very hard to tolerate. We'll see you in the morning. I heard something in the bush. Not sure what. See, that's that's why I like to stay away from the creek a bit. If you're right by a creek, you can't hear nothing. There's something out here. Not sure what. And I didn't bring a flashlight. But actually, I can see through this camera. I'm going to take the camera off and have a look with that. It's all glory till night time, I can tell you. I don't see anything. This is a problem with not having a film crew, eh? But you know what? This is comfortable. Very comfortable. I'm just glad there's no mosquitoes. Morning. Oh, oh I tell you. Well, yeah, it's a little chilly for me. I should have brought a coat. I don't know why I didn't bring a coat. But the moss bed was very comfortable. Um, the warm rocks for most of the night, but they cooled off. Um, should have maybe used more rocks too. But we made her through. It's another beautiful day in the tropics. Yeah, we got lots of ice on the windshields. Some neat patterns too. It's minus nine is what it is. But uh, we'll get the rocks heated up. Try to show you how efficient that can be for heating your vehicle. Probably they'll have to sit in the fire for an hour or so. Let's get the rocks heating up. <laughs> Try to warm the truck up a bit. I might even cook something to eat on the rocks. It seems like my uh, steaks are frozen. Oh well, they'll still cook. So I tied some wire around my rocks and hopefully I can transport them that way. Get the fire going. It might take an hour to heat these up. Whatever it takes, if this is the trick you're relying on, I still got some coals from the fire last night. Yeah, she's a little chilly. So I couldn't find a flat big rock that I could pry out of the ground to put in the truck, but I do have this piece of metal, metal box. And I'm gonna put that upside down, and put my rocks here. So I'm ready to put my rocks in. I'll show you the windshields. All laced up. Okay, we'll uh, get the rocks in here. You gotta be careful you don't touch anything with it. I just gotta watch. This is a big one. Is it wire hot? I hope not. 
lock the doors. Come on, get in here. A little awkward. Looks like I only got room for the two, so hopefully the two do it. Oh yeah, the heat is just radiating off these. But I see my camera lens is fogging up on me now. Oh, it's already, uh, they've only been in here. I'm gonna have to wipe the lens, I can see. They've only been in here a few minutes and the ice is literally just melting off the windshield. Look at the ice. It's just melting like crazy underneath the rocks. I can feel the heat already in here. Well, I tell you what, you won't believe this, but these rocks have been in here, I would say four or five minutes and the ice is almost gone off the windshields. And the temperature has come up about six degrees in five minutes in here. Unbelievable. So in about five or six minutes, we're up from minus nine to zero. You see, I wasn't kidding you about heating your vehicle with hot rocks. The ice is almost off these windshields already in a few minutes. You can watch it uh, melting off the windshields. It's unbelievable. See, another handy trick to know if your vehicle doesn't start in the bush and you got to stay with it. I didn't have to turn the fan on, and trust me, I did not start the vehicle. There's no way that your vehicle, starting your vehicle in that kind of cold, would have defrosted this place as quick. That's 10 minutes, and we've gone from minus 9 to plus 5 in 10 minutes. Ice on my uh, steak. So I can uh, sit here in warmth and cook my breakfast on the rocks. <laughs> I, I just can't believe how quick it warmed this place up. I'm going to give it another half an hour and see how hot we can actually get it in here. It's, it's comfortable now. I'm just sitting and cooking my steak on the uh, rocks. Unbelievable. So you can probably hear my steak cooking <laughs> this is amazing and it's gone from minus nine to plus ten in about half an hour so 20 degrees in half an hour the ice was off the windows within like minutes it was unbelievable mind you i had pretty big rocks and i had them in the fire for about an hour but they'll hold their heat for hours so you can imagine you put these in the vehicle at night It'll stay warm all night, but make sure they don't touch something that's going to burn your vehicle down. My steak is done too. So I hope you found that informative. It goes to show you a couple of big hot rocks, an hour in the fire, you can keep your vehicle warm all night. Like these rocks will stay warm for hours. And I actually was surprised myself how quick it defrosted and warmed the truck up. And I cooked my steak. So, Greg Ovens, I'll see you on the next one. So I was uh, just driving along the road here and I see something I can't turn down really. I've been cramped up and sleeping in this truck for a while. I just want to be able to stretch out. My back is killing me. I'm going to sleep under this tree tonight. Yeah, it's winter, but you know what? Winter camping is one of my favorite things to do. It's not cold out, and I got a good sleeping bag. I mean, I wouldn't do this in 30 below in a big storm, but I'll show you where I want to spend the night tonight and cook something on the fire, listen to the wolves, coyotes, whatever. I mean, it's not a survival thing that I'm doing right now. I just want to spend the night under the trees, and even if it snows, I'll be good under this one. I'll show you. Be nice and dry under here. Yeah, so if you haven't tried winter camping, you got to try it. I just want to stretch out, and this is what I like to do. 
don't like setting up tents and all that. I just want to sleep under this tree, have something to eat. I'm going to roast the chicken up on the fire and, and uh, just have a winter camping night. This is the kind of things I live for, man. Try it sometime. You'll like it. So one thing I do want to say is you see how low these branches are? I don't want my fire anywhere near these dead branches. Yeah, see, I mean, you can imagine how quick this tree would go up if I was to build a fire, like, anywhere close to it. Probably better off to start my fire over there somewhere, in the snow even, but at least 10 feet away from the tree. Definitely not under it. Even got some dry grass under the tree here too. Be able to get our fire going like nothing. My sleeping bag is losing feathers here. Must have got punctured in the truck or something. Time for a new one, I guess. Oh well, I've had it everywhere. Patagonia, all over. Oh, I love winter camping. <laughs> I do, I just love it, and this will be perfect. This is so covered. I mean, it would take you a lot of time to make a shelter like this, and this is just natural. All these big branches all the way around. Even if we get a snowstorm, this is gonna be good. You bet ya. It's amazing how comfortable it can be just uh, under a tree, because these, uh, you know, the pine needles from this tree have been piling up here for years, and it's actually very soft, definitely protected. I mean, I love these kind of situations. And it's warm enough with this sleeping bag. Well, it's going to get cold tonight. I mean, definitely freezing. But I'm not too worried about that. But anyways, I'm going to get some sleep. See what tomorrow brings. And, hmm, losing a lot of feathers on this sleeping bag. I guess it's time for a new one. It should do for tonight fine. I'm sure. If not, I guess I'll have to go back to the truck, eh? <laughs> no. I won't do that. Okay, folks, well, that was very comfortable. And I see that it snowed quite a bit last night. There's little bits of snow around me, but not too bad. Um, adjust this here, it's too low. I was perfectly comfortable, perfectly warm. Uh, the stars were out, I could see last night. It was very cold, I would say 10 below. But I was perfectly fine under here. I got up this morning, and it looks like we've had 6 to 8 inches of snow. Little skiffs around where I was sleeping, but nothing major. But I love this winter camping. This is why these kind of things, trees like this, are perfect. And it was good to get this snow to show you. How efficient that this uh, kind of a tree can be in a snowstorm. So folks, um, I'll tell you right now, um, I am sick and tired of uh, staying in that cramped truck. This truck is too narrow. I don't really like this. Hammock, Zach sent me quite a while ago. It's time to be able to stretch out and uh, it's got the insulated uh, part to it. So I think it's gonna be a lot more comfortable than the truck. We're gonna find out how well this uh, works.
All right. I just wrapped it around both ways and tied it. Can't seem to figure out those little buckles, how they work properly, but once it's wrapped two or three times and just one knot, it's fine too. Finley. Come on, pup. No, 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 no. Don't do that, man. Yeah, chew on that stick. No, I can't go anywhere. I remember the first night that I ever stayed in one of these, I fell out of it. I'm glad that didn't happen when we were on the top of the platforms. <laughs> one cool thing is that there's no mosquitoes. Watch it fall. I heard some movement, but I think it's just a branch. And I will figure out how to set up that insulated cover on the bottom because I know it does get fairly cold at night still. Well, I don't see. Huh. I wonder if I was supposed to put this on first. Like around before I tied it. I should have looked into that. So I do have this clip here, which I think I can just clip on that side. And uh, You guys know I'm always improvising with things. But one thing I was thinking about, it looks like it could snow. It's going to get cold and it's clouded over. Maybe it will snow. But here's the thing. Yeah, I could set the tarp up, but you know what? I'll bet you anything that the mosquito net on this is fine enough the snow wouldn't come through anyway. And, you know, you might say, well, your body heat, melt it, drip. We'll see. I'm going to take that chance because that's the way I do things. This will work fine. There is a clip here. Well, by the time my body weight goes down there, that's perfect. I don't see a problem with that. I know it's not probably the way it's supposed to go back or go together. It's gonna be nice to stretch out, Finley. Set. Test it out. Take my boots. Oh yeah, I can tell. It's gonna be whew, a lot better than cramped in that silly little truck. Let's just see here. Watch it break. Got the insulation here. Well, I got a good sleeping bag too, but I know this is gonna be the way that I'm gonna want to sleep from now till spring. Oh yeah, I like it already. Finley chasing sparks. That is funny. It's hot. That was pretty funny, Finley chasing the sparks there. He's not going to get burnt by little sparks. He knows enough not to get close to the fire, but a good suppression dog, I guess, or firefighter. Chases the sparks around and puts them out. That's cool. Now I'm going to get him fetching wood eventually. That'll be even better. I'm ready to retire. I got my little buddy uh, Finley in the truck. Um, I don't want anything happening to him. Because actually, there's been a couple of cougar attacks here in BC recently that have taken dogs. And uh, I don't need him to go missing. Sun's coming up. This is in my way. But yes, that is far better than the truck. Just cozy. Like I say, it wasn't 30 below when I did this. But at least I can stretch out. I'm not cramped in that truck. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about a plant that I haven't uh, really discussed in previous videos. And that is Eusnea. Also known as Old Man's Beard. It comes in this kind of greenish brown. What I want to do in this video is make a uh, survival blanket with it. If you're pressed for time, you can take piles of it like this and put over yourself all the way up and down and then to prevent the wind from blowing it off you would take 
uh, pine boughs and lie over yourself as well. But what I want to do is make uh, a nice survival blanket. So I'm going to weave it or braid it with three strands into something that looks like this. I want a survival blanket that looks cool. That's why I'm doing this video. But it will cover from my toes right up to my neck. And you see how it's um, kind of separated. What you can do, you can fold certain spots and then uh, we'll get strands of it like this. Sometimes you get shorter pieces, but you can just put them together and roll them and they'll stay. And then once we braid this, it's going to hold itself together too. It has a tendency to stick to itself as well, which is kind of a nice property. So then we'll get a strand like this that we can use for a braid. So now we have something that we can start braiding. We're going to want to twist it fairly tight like this when we braid it. I've got three ready to braid. You take my dog bane and tie these three together. So we've got those tied together. We're just going to braid it like a ponytail. You have to be fairly gentle with it because you can tear it. And see how we're going to twist each one before we wrap it. And then hold it with your thumb here too. And it's okay once they're to push it together and that helps hold it as well. Nice and tight, no air gaps. These are the strands we want. Nice long, easy to braid. That's kind of what I'm after. Well, the blanket's coming along pretty good. I'm getting all my uh, braided parts together for it. Maybe after I get this video done, I should go to Jamaica, man. So what I'm gonna do now is hang this up across a couple of my uh, teepee poles so that I can uh, keep each strand separate. I tied the ends together with dog bane, but now String it up so I can get my strands where they're supposed to go and every four inches tie them together. All tied together. Nice. Now I don't I uh, don't see any gaps that I'm worried about. But like I say, if there is gaps, you can take the chunks, break them off, and stuff it in, in spots. Wherever you see the holes. Weighs about, oh, four pounds probably. Now I can keep adding and make it wider. It is a bit on the narrow side, I'm going to give you that. But like I said before, in a survival situation, you're going to cover yourself with piles of it and put boughs over to hold it down in case it gets windy. I know it's going to be warm and I'm not worried about the odd gap that I have either. I'm perfectly happy with it and it's going to do just fine. Me and Finn are going to hike off find a spot that we can uh, hopefully get some moss and make a little moss bed for the night. Okay, I see we got some moss over here. This looks like a pretty good spot. Got some trees for cover in case it rains, but I don't think it's gonna rain. Oh, nice and soft and thick, this moss here. I spent a lot of time sleeping on moss beds. I actually enjoy it. But this is perfect. Look at how soft it is. It's nice and dry too, Finn. Oh yeah, it's long enough. Well, I made sure of that. I'll use my coat for a pillow because I think it's gonna be plenty warm. Moss is dry. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna sleep like a baby, Finn. Okay, don't wreck my blanket now. Okay, look out, look out. Don't 
trample everything. You can sleep on the moss, you'll be fine. Well, I'm having a little trouble sleeping, but that's just because I'm thinking about stuff. But this blanket is warm, I'm not even kidding. So, well, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it. The blanket was quite warm. Fortunately, it didn't rain. Um, had a little trouble getting to sleep uh, in the beginning, and not because it wasn't warm, but I think because I didn't bring my shotgun, and we're in grizzly country here. Um, the dog's nice to have, but I probably should have brought the shotgun. I probably would have fell asleep a little easier. That's the only reason. If you get time, try to make a blanket like this. But right on. And get up and get our day going. Joe and I are heading off to Vancouver Island on an adventure to do a seven day survival challenge. Okay. And the sea started getting rough and then it got worse and worse. Quite the spines. 